Hi everybody, I'm Mr. Panola, and today I'm here in the science prep room with a really large object, a refrigerator. I'm going to try to put a force on this refrigerator, refrigerator to see if I can get it to accelerate. In other words, to change its speed. And so, in order to do that, I'm going to apply a force to it. Remember, a force is a push or a pull. I'm going to pull the refrigerator towards me with an approximate force of about 500 newtons. Have a watch. I'm pulling, but I can't seem to get the fridge to budge. It doesn't seem to move towards me. Why did the fridge not move towards me? That was interesting. The fridge did not move towards me, and we need to figure out why it didn't. So let's do that by drawing a diagram that shows the forces that were acting on the fridge. Here's our fridge. I'll represent it with a square on my, on my whiteboard. And I was pulling the fridge with a force, I said, of approximately 500 newtons. So why did the fridge not accelerate? Well, if you think back to our last lesson, it's pretty clear what's going on. There must have been some force going the other way that was working against me. Do you know how much that force needed to be? If you said 500 newtons, you'd be right. I was applying a force what in one direction of 500 newtons. But I couldn't get the fridge to accelerate. It wouldn't change its speed. And that's because there was another force going against it of equal magnitude, 500 newtons going back the other way. So this was the force that I used. But what force was this? No, I didn't have somebody hiding inside the wall that was pulling against me. This was a force that might be hidden to the human eye. It's the force of friction. And today, we're going to talk about the force of friction and how it affects objects. So let's start by defining what friction is. Friction is a force that acts in the opposite direction of an object's motion or intended motion. Friction is a force that acts in the opposite direction of an object's motion or intended motion. What does that mean? Well, that means that friction is a force, so it can be measured in newtons, as we typically measure force. It acts in the opposite direction, so we know that it's kind of acting against something, and in the opposite direction of an object's motion. So if an object is moving one way, then friction is acting the other way on it or intended motion. So if an object is trying to move one way, then friction acts the other way on it. In the example you saw earlier, the fridge was trying to move in the direction I was pulling it. That was its direction of intended motion. But friction was keeping the fridge in one place and not accelerating. That's because friction was acting against, against the intended motion of the fridge. It was trying to move one way, friction was acting the other way. So friction is the name for any force that acts in the opposite direction of an object's motion or intended motion. Did you know that there are actually four different types of friction? We don't just say friction. Friction is a very general term. So instead, let's go over the four types of friction today so that you can use them in your class activities. The first type of friction is the one that I was demonstrating when I was trying to pull the refrigerator. And that's called static friction. 
Static friction is a type of friction that acts against objects that are not moving currently, but are trying to. That's why it was static friction working against me when I was trying to move the refrigerator. I was trying to move it one way, but the fridge was at rest and friction wanted to keep the fridge at rest. So static friction acted the opposite way, working against my force. Static friction always is a force of friction that works when an object is at rest, but another force is trying to get it to move. Static friction will work against that other force and try to keep the object at rest. So let's now go to the screen and let's take a look at what was actually happening when static friction was working against me trying to push on the fridge. Here's me, or at least a computer representation of me. And so I pushed on the fridge with a big force of 500 newtons. I'll turn on some values here so you can see what's happening. Notice I'm pushing with an applied force here of 500 newtons. But that force is not enough to move the fridge. And that's because there is a friction force, specifically a static friction force, that's acting against me. And so as a result, the forces are balanced and the speed of the refrigerator stays the same. It does not accelerate because static friction is balancing out my applied force and not letting the refrigerator move. So let's head back to the science prep room. I'm gonna try to move our fridge again, but this time I'm gonna use a little bit more strength. Now I'm going to use 800 newtons of force and I'll try to pull the fridge again. So this time I'm gonna pull with 800 newtons. Let's see what happens. Did you see what just happened? I pulled with 800 newtons of force, and this time the fridge moved. That's because there wasn't enough static friction to keep the fridge in place. I pulled with more force than the static friction was working against me. And as a result, those forces were unbalanced. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So now let's make a force diagram of what was happening when I pulled with a stronger amount of force on the fridge. Here's our refrigerator again, represented by a simple box. And I pulled on the fridge once again, but this time with more force. Remember, I said I was pulling now with about 800 newtons of force. Well, guess what? Static friction, or at least the static friction that's acting on my fridge, can only go up to a certain amount. In fact, on that refrigerator, given the material that it's made out of and the weight of the refrigerator, the maximum amount of static friction that can be on that fridge is 700 newtons. So even if the maximum possible amount of static friction acted on the fridge, it's still gonna budge as long as my force is more than 700 newtons, which it was. So since I pushed with 800 newtons, or pulled rather with 800 newtons, and there was 700 newtons acting against me, there is a net force that is acting on the fridge of 100 newtons to the right. Anytime there's a net force, that means the forces are unbalanced and the object will accelerate. And that's why the fridge accelerated. It changed its speed from zero meters per, se per second to some moving speed once I applied that force. Let's now take a look at what that looks like on the computer simulation. Action four. Now let's take a look at an example with two boxes instead of a, of a refrigerator. If I push on these boxes with a force of, say, 150 newtons, well, then the, the boxes won't budge at all. And that's because I'm applying a force of 150 newtons, but there's 150 newtons working against me. Notice the speed of the boxes is not changing. That's because they're not accelerating. But let's pause the simulation and let's increase my force 
to 300 newtons. And I'm going to hit play again. Watch what happens now. The boxes this time move. They're now changing their speed and accelerating. Why did that happen? That's because 300 newtons is more than the maximum amount of static friction that the surfaces that the box are rubbing on can apply. And so as a result, they will now accelerate. Action one. Now notice the example on the board that I've paused. You'll see that I'm applying a force of 300 newtons as the crate is moving towards one side of your screen. However, you'll notice that there is still friction acting against the crate. This can't be static friction. Remember, static friction only works against objects that are at rest and trying to move. So even though this object is moving, if I hit play, there is still little friction working against it. What kind of friction is that? It's another type of friction that we haven't talked about that acts on objects that are sliding across the ground. Do you know what it is? It's called sliding friction. Let's take a look at it on the board. Sliding friction is a type of friction that is uh, very different from static friction. And that's because when you have sliding friction, something is already moving. And sliding friction is just working against it to try to slow the object down. So where static friction acts against objects that are not moving, but attempting to, sliding friction works against objects that are moving, and it always acts in the opposite direction that the object is moving. So once you get something moving, well, it might be a little easier to move, but there's still sliding friction working against you. Let's go back to the simulation and take a look at that once again. Have a look at my screen. You'll see that the boxes in front of me are accelerating. They're speeding up. But there is sliding friction now working against them of 188 newtons. Let's bring my person's force now to zero. I'm going to have him let go of the crates. Do you notice now that there is still sliding friction? Well, the object's still moving. So sliding friction is going to continue to work against the object until it gets the object to stop. When there wasn't a person pushing, sliding friction was the only force that was acting on the boxes. And that's why they came to rest. Remember, anything that changes its velocity is accelerating. So while the crates were in motion, give me a second as I get them in motion once again, while they were in motion and they were slowing down, they were accelerating. And that's because sliding friction was the unbalanced force that got them to accelerate. Many people think that when they slide something along the floor, that the object just naturally comes to rest. That's not quite true. It's actually sliding friction that causes the object to come to rest. Let's look at that in real life now. Action one. Here's a physics textbook. I'm going to slide it across the room towards the sink on the other end. Now you might think that the physics textbook is just gonna keep moving, but let's have a watch. Sliding friction is gonna take over and eventually cause it to stop. Three, two, one. Did you see the book stop down there? That's because while it was in motion, the only force acting on the book, or at least the only force acting in the left-right direction, was sliding friction. And as a result, there was an unbalanced force on that book, and it accelerated. It slowed down and came to a stop. There's one last type of friction that we need to discuss. It's very similar to sliding friction because it acts against objects that are moving and it acts in the opposite direction of their motion. But this is the type of friction that acts on objects with wheels. It's called rolling friction for obvious reasons. Rolling friction does basically the same thing as sliding friction. It will work against something that's moving, but since there are wheels on the bottom, it makes the object more likely to continue to stay in motion as the wheels work. Let's take a look at rolling friction in action now. Here's an example of rolling friction. 
I'm going to push this chair across the floor. If it didn't have wheels, it wouldn't go very far, but it's going to slide very far. That's because rolling friction is usually less than static friction. Have a watch. That chair might have only gone to here if it had no wheels because static friction can be a big amount that will slow an object down very quickly. But since it had wheels and there was rolling friction, there wasn't as strong a friction force causing it to slow down. It still did slow down because there was still a little bit of rolling friction with the wheels, but it was not as dramatic as it would have been if there was sliding friction just against the solid bottom. There is one last type of friction, and that's called fluid friction. But we'll save that one for another video. What I want you guys to know today is this. An object that is at rest and trying to move because of a force might not because of static friction. But once the force is big enough to overcome static friction, then either sliding or rolling friction takes over. It will still work against the object, but these two types of friction are not as much as static friction could be. And that's because it's harder to get something to move from rest than to keep something moving. Think about it. It was harder for me to get the fridge to move from rest than to keep it in motion. To wrap up today, I'm going to give you one last example that you actually can test out yourself. Friction comes from tiny little microscopic bumps on the surface of an object. For example, the bottom of this book might look flat, but there's lots of little bumps that rub against each other and rub up against the bumps on the floor that cause friction. It's sort of like if you take your fingers and you interlock them together like this. If you try to rub your fingers past each other, you feel a little bit of friction between them. The further you dig your fingers into each other, that friction gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's because those, those fingers moving against each other are simulating the bumps that are moving against each other when an object is sliding across the floor or trying to slide across the floor. I hope you learned something today about the different types of friction. We'll explore fluid friction a little bit more in the future, but you should know a little bit about these types before moving forward. Remember, friction is a force that acts against the direction that an object is either moving or trying to move. Thanks for watching.